Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh. The Together Again Tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest Andrew Ripp. Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Pain Serena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. Three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org. There have been times in my life where I have felt completely overwhelmed. We just get all caught up in the, the details that really don't matter. But really, when we show up into a room, in a room, what people remember about any of us is how they felt in our presence. Everyone, and welcome to the Christy Wright Show, where faith meets personal development so you can have a bigger faith and a better life. I'm so excited because today we are talking about something that is really going to help you, especially for those of you that might be having a hard time. Maybe you're going through a tough season or you're just exhausted from life. I'm gonna give you some tips and advice that hopefully will set you free and encourage you. And then I get to sit down with the amazing legend, Grammy award-winning Amy Grant. And y'all, she has some really incredible wisdom for us that's gonna help us in any season. But first, let's talk about how to get through a hard season. Here's one of the things that I've noticed. When I'm entering a new season, whether that's a season with my health, where I'm going through something and I need to recover, or I'm going into a busy season at work, or maybe a difficult season with one of my kids, What I tend to do is continue to expect of myself everything I expected before I entered that season. Now, the most dramatic example I can give you was when I got pregnant with my first son, Carter. I remember getting pregnant with him and still expecting that I would work out all the time, that I would have a clean house, that I would have energy for all the things I normally did, and I didn't. Y'all, in that first trimester, I was exhausted. I was so tired that I actually asked my leader if I could leave work, go home, and take a nap in the middle of the day. That tired. I went to bed at 6.30 every night that first trimester. Well, I remember just beating myself up over it. You're not getting anything done. You're not cleaning the house. You haven't run in weeks. Because I continued to expect of myself everything that I used to do, but now I was in a new season. I experienced something similar when Carter was born, and I thought, oh my gosh, maternity leaf? Like, I'm going to have a spotless house and start new projects. I don't know, maybe I'll start a new business with all this free time off of work. What a joke! If you even get a shower each week, it's a success. I had no idea how hard it would be or how little time I would have for those things that I used to have time for. So whether you are newly pregnant or you have a newborn or you're going through a health situation or you have something going on in your family, something going on at work, I wanna give you three very simple things that you can do to help you adapt to this new season that you're in, to help you get through this season a little bit easier. The first thing that I want you to do is lower the bar. Lower the bar. Whatever bar you set for yourself in terms of expectations of how clean the house is gonna be, how much energy you're gonna have, how good you're gonna look, lower the bar. Lower the bar. When you go into a difficult season, that season, regardless of what it looks like for you, is taking up not only time, it's taking up energy, it's taking up emotional capacity that you have, it's taking up mental space, it's taking a lot from you. Anybody watching or listening right now that is going through a hard time, think about how much you think about that thing. How much do you think about that thing? How much does it consume your thoughts, your time, your days? A lot. So if it's gonna take up this much space in your brain and this much space in your calendar and this much space in your physical energy, you've got to lower the bar. You've got to lower expectations of yourself in this new season. 
Lower what you expect of yourself and lower the standard. Stop holding your feet to the fire for all the things you used to do before that happened. Because when things change, things need to change. Something changed in your life. Something is going on and you need to change your standards and expectations of yourself. I remember sitting down with my mentor, Eve, uh, soon after having Carter, my firstborn, and she asked me, how's motherhood? What's it like having a baby? How's it? I said, it's hard. It's really stinking hard. And she was like, well, you know why, don't you? And I thought, well, because this tiny human never sleeps, because he won't nurse, because I don't know what I'm doing, because I haven't had a shower in four days. I could give you a long list of reasons why it's hard. But I didn't say any of that. I just waited for Eve to answer her own question, which I knew she was going to because it was rhetorical. She said, it's hard because you're still trying to do all the things you used to do before you had a baby. But now you have a baby, a human life you're responsible for. That is hard. Men and women, lower the bar. Lower the expectations that you have of yourself and watch how that frees you to get through this season with a lot more strength and a lot less guilt. The second thing that I want you to do is identify the necessities. See, I don't know if you're like this, but I'm guilty of this. Everything is important. Everything is equally important. I need to feed my children and also steam clean the couches. I need to make sure I show up for work and also make sure that I look good and go out with my friends once a week. I need to make sure that I have my bills paid and also all of the couch cushions are organized and all the throw pillows are exactly in the place that I like them because I like them, you know, like the blue one on the left and the white one on the middle, not the other way. Like we get, yeah. These things are not the same. These things are not created equal. These things are not all important. What's important in those examples? Feeding my children, going to work. That's it. It's not important if the couch is steam cleaned. It's not important if my throw pillows are in the spot that I normally prefer them to be in. Identify the necessities. What is a necessity right now? I'll go ahead and tell you probably what it is. It is a necessity that you and your family eat. It is a necessity that you show up for work or your business or whatever source of income that you have. It is a necessity that your children are safe. That's about it. That's about it. Your hair can be greasy. Your house can be messy. Your food can be takeout. That's not a necessity that you have a home cook, organic, wonderful meal, that you look good and fresh with perfect makeup and a new outfit. That's not a necessity. What's a necessity right now is getting through this season. You've got to identify what is a necessity and what is not. And you focus on the necessities and let everything else go. Here's what that means. That means that when you run through the drive-thru to pick up dinner, you don't tell yourself the story that you're failing because you're not. Because you decided that a home-cooked meal is not a necessity. So you drive through that drive-thru proud. I'm winning. My children are eating. This is a success in this season. And you are proud of what you're doing right because you're getting the necessities right. And you're not distracting yourself or beating yourself up for not getting all of these things that are not necessities right. Identify the necessities and let everything else go. The third thing that I want you to do, and this is simple, but I want you to actually actively practice it. Give yourself grace. Now, I know you've heard that and some of you are tuning me out. Come back to me. Listen, come back. Listen to me. Here's what that looks like practically. It means understanding what you need in this season and giving yourself that. Does your body need to heal from a surgery, from childbirth, from some sickness? Give yourself the space the time, the freedom, the medication, the support, the help to heal. Do you need more time alone because you're going through a really hard time? Or maybe you need more time with friends because you need support and community. Give yourself what you need to get through this season. Maybe you had something horrible happen. Maybe you experienced a tragedy or heartbreak or a loss. Give yourself the room to grieve, to grieve. 
to just sit with your feelings. Give yourself the space to have what you need to get through this time. Stop beating yourself up. Stop telling yourself you should be over it by now. Stop telling yourself you should be better than this. Stop telling yourself you should have moved on by now. Stop telling yourself you should be handling this a certain way, better, more impressive, more together, with a cleaner house and better hair. Stop telling yourself that story because it's simply not true. And by the way, you would never say that to a friend going through what you're going through. I love how Brene Brown says, talk to yourself like you would someone that you love. What does that mean? That means you lower the bar, identify the necessities and cut everything else out. And above all, give yourself grace. Give yourself what you need in this season to get through it. And when you do, it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy, but I do promise you, you will get through it with more strength than you expect. All right, y'all, I'm so excited because I get to sit down with Grammy Award winner and winner of just so many awards, the legend, Amy Grant. Amy, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Good morning. I'm so excited about this. I have been a fan of yours for forever. Like, I know so many people have. And um, this year is really special because you are right in the middle of this incredible 30th anniversary of your Heart in Motion album. And I know that this must be a really cool moment where you're reflecting on the last 30 years and kind of uh, looking back at all of your music. Tell me what this has been like as you're celebrating this. I think the the biggest sort of wow is to go, that music that sometimes feels like we made yesterday right. was half a lifetime ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, <clears throat> right now I, I turned 60 this year. We, we re-released Heart in Motion with some bonus materials. Um, I had open heart surgery a year ago. <clears throat> feels very thematic, but the real da-da was um, 4th of July weekend. My daughter, Millie, who was, you know, I was pregnant with her and then right around her birth and first year of her life. And then she came out on the Grammys with me when I sang the song, Baby, Baby, that she inspired. Oh, wow. She just told me she's pregnant with a baby Oh, girl. wow. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. I know, there's just like so many themes aligned. It's really been beautiful. You know? yeah. And we all have things that we look back on with just such fond memories. And just sometimes it's nice to reconnect with the people that were all a part of that process. And then you go, oh, it's special to you too. And for this reason and that reason. Anyway, so it's been it's been a great prolonged conversation over the last few weeks. That's so cool. Well, that's such a famous song. I mean, I remember singing that song when I was little. And it's just one of those songs that like has such a great beat. It's so cool to hear from you though, behind the scenes of your daughter and being inspired by that. And I know that a lot of women are listening to this and watching, and they might be in that season, Amy, where they are in the trenches of little kids trying to juggle their job and their dream or their business and their babies. And I've got three, six, four, and one, and I am <laughs> in the Ooh. trenches. So mm-hmm. tell me what it's like from your perspective, just hearing that your daughter is having a baby and looking back on like even when she came out on stage with you and thinking, I mean, people say it goes so fast. Is it true? <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, yes and no, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I think it was an easier time then really? to be a, a, a mother of young children. I know I, I, had, uh, I had help, an extended family. I always had a sister who was pregnant at the same time I was, so we would kind of commiserate about our sleepless nights and all yeah. that. Um, but... Believe it or not, I had one nanny from, and I had two kids in my 20s, one in my 30s, and my last at 40. I mean, I just spread motherhood sure out did. as, yeah. as <laughs> long, PTA, 33 years. Um, but Phyllis was the the one nanny I had for 33 years. Wow. And I know, and just she's just so amazing. And anyway, but um, a couple of things that I think made it easier is on one hand, social media connects us to other people so we don't feel so isolated, but it can be such a robber of sleep time. Mm. And and that, that, you know, that's just even what I tell myself is when you're tired, if you can sleep, put your phone down yeah. and get a nap. And then also my whole life, I have enjoyed um, just like looking at my watch and saying, I've got five minutes that I have nowhere I have to be. Yeah. I take my shoes off and go outside yeah. and go, I'm taking a five minute vacation That's right, right here. <laughs> 
Because you knew five minutes, you can sneak off for five minutes. Yeah, I love that. So, Such simple things, but I also love how you highlight the importance of help because I think so many women feel guilty. Um, when I launched my first book, Business Boutique, in 2017, we hired a nanny. Her name is Becca, and she's been with us since, and she is mm-hmm. a part of the family. She will be with us forever, hopefully. But I think so many women feel guilty about having help, whether that's a babysitter or a nanny or, or any type of child care. And, and I think when you're juggling a lot of things, I just love that example that you said, that you say, hey, you need help to be able to do all these things that you're doing. It's not a weakness. It's, it's wise to have that. Well, yeah. And I mean, there are all different ways for a family to be structured. Right. But anybody that's doing a lot of extra things they're getting help. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, nobody can do it all. And, you know, help comes in waves or it can yeah. be constant like a, a nanny. But um, yeah, just uh, to me, the emotional responsibility of being a mom, you have to find ways to sort of lighten that load. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I can't listen to Patsy Klein without remembering the stretch of time that, um, you know, bubble bath, which might not be a good idea now. I'm not sure what they say, but, you know, 30 years ago, we were doing bubble baths with the kids. But bubble baths with my two daughters when they were little, listening to Patsy Cline. Yeah. I would just say, anytime you can infuse music, Mm. infuse music into cleaning up the kitchen, infuse music into housework, infuse music into bedtime, you know, you don't have to be singing it, but there's something about that that just, you know, it is soul-filling. And you go, Oh, it's, we're going to make it. It is. Know? It's so true. We'll put on music and we'll let the kids go around the table and pick songs from Alexa, you know, request songs. Mm-hmm. And um, and they're always like some of those like kids bop type of upbeat, fun music. And, and we'll do dance parties and make up dance moves while we're at the table. You know, just real simple things. But it yes. keeps them energized, engaged, actually eating, surprisingly. And it keeps them not fighting, which is so key. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Music will reduce the fights, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. Speaking of music, Amy, you have been doing this for such a long time, and you still seem to love it. What is the secret to not burning out on this thing that you love? Because I know a lot of people, they're doing something they love, but even that thing they love can become a grind, and they, they don't want it to. They don't mean for it to. Talk a little bit about that. You seem to still love it. You're celebrating 30 years of the album this year and going on tour this fall. You've got so many things going on. What's the secret to that? Ooh, well, I mean, after COVID, you know, everything that we were doing t- tour-wise, you know, ceased right. for 15, 16 months. And I mean, anybody that kind of does the same thing year in, year out, no matter what it is, teacher, writer, singer, uh, business person, I know, you know, there's this like this fantasy in the back of our heads. What if I had a totally different life? I mean, I think everybody thinks that. Right. But there was something about COVID that just ripped it all away mm. that made me be so grateful. You know, I, I I don't ever want my language to be, I have to go to work. It's like, I get to do this. Right. I get to work. Yeah. And um, anyway, I never imagined I would have a career all these years of making music. When I was a kid, hanging out, singing with my friends, there were always people that sang better than I did. But I just, I love the environment that music creates. And to me, it's like a big welcome table. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So you mentioned um, that you had open heart surgery last year. Talk a little bit about, I mean, you even shared a little bit of how that changed your perspective, you know, on on everything and COVID, for example. Um, But talk a little bit about the recovery, because I can't even imagine what that recovery was like, especially for someone that is as busy and in demand as you are. What was that like to listen to your body, take care of yourself, give yourself what you needed when the world didn't stop, it's still so busy? Talk a little bit about that. Right. Well, if there was a good time for recovery from a major surgery, COVID was a good time. Yeah. Um, Because I didn't feel like the world was rushing on without me. Um, But... Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's an interesting community, the Zipper Club. Anybody that's had their chest cracked open, um, I was so grateful that I had an issue that was fixable. Mm. And so, you know, the, the recovery process was at first you sort of feel like you've been run over by a truck. Yeah. And then, but every day it got a little better. You know, I'm yeah. glad I had hair. I would like pull myself up <laughs> my <Yeah>. hair. <laughs> And just, you just sort of watch and feel your body heal. Yeah. Um, but I have thought so many times about somebody with an ongoing situation, mm-hmm. the ongoing journey of cancer, the ongoing journey of 
anything, high blood pressure, Mm -hmm. diabetes. And I've, I count myself so fortunate that what I had was something that was fixable. Yeah. And, and after that, really a non-issue. Yeah. But um, anyway, the best thing I think I did was I, I tried not to think about it Mm -hmm. until the day for surgery came. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually have a friend who's having heart surgery today. And in a way, I feel like I've become the go-to for different people saying what, now, what can I really expect? Right. And there are nitty-gritty details that I would not ever say on your podcast. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's an element we just keep private. I hear you. You don't even want to know. That's right. But, but to just say, it really, you just have to trust the people that are taking care of you. Yeah. And ask everybody to pray. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and you know, our lives are a mystery. I, I have a friend that went in for uh, open-heart surgery uh, two and a half weeks ago and passed away two weeks later. Oh, I'm so sorry. And, um, yeah, and um, and that funeral's this Friday. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are just no guarantees in life. And maybe that's, maybe those are the things that make, it's good to think about those things because it makes even the hard things feel a little more precious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and this is valuable, even if yeah. it's hard, yeah. this matters. Yeah. I care about this. I care about this person. Mm-hmm. Those things, it's good to stay sensitized to that. And and the tough stuff is what sensitizes us to those. Yeah. You know, what really matters. So it's just all part of the journey. Yeah. You have such a um, grateful heart, you know, that comes through and everything. Say, I get to do this. And I'm so grateful it was fixable. It's I just, that posture of gratitude comes through in everything that you mm-hmm. say. And I think that that does make such a difference in how you experience the good times, like the mountaintops of the 30th anniversary of your album or the really difficult seasons of what you went through or certainly losing a friend to that. That posture um, changes how you experience it. But I'm sure it's also um, changes how other people around you even see that, you know? So that's mm-hmm. I think that's, um, that's even a powerful lesson in that and how you how you see it. Um, I, I'm curious, Amy, with with so many things that you have had in front of you, so many opportunities, so many, I'm sure, demands and, and requests and so on. Uh, COVID was a weird year because your calendar was cleared and everybody's was and so on. But now, I mean, you're back into this busy season. You're going on tour this fall and there's all these things going on, all good things, it sounds like, um, that you've got coming up with the album and stuff. How do you keep yourself from getting overwhelmed because I think that that is one of the top words I hear from women that I work with and, and you know, walk with and so on. And whether they're a stay-at-home mom and they're overwhelmed by motherhood or they're running a business and they're overwhelmed by their business or they're overwhelmed with a health crisis, something that is just taking all their time and attention, recovery, mm-hmm. healing, and so on, whether it's themselves or a family member. I think that is one of those um, words that I hear a lot. And I'm just curious from someone like you that certainly has a lot on your plate that could overwhelm you, but you seem to have a posture of, um, you know, grace and, and calm. And even the way that you speak is very calming. I'm curious how you, how you manage that. So you don't get overwhelmed. It's an interesting question. I mean, there have been times in my life, (laughs) um, where I have felt completely overwhelmed and always it's because I'm looking too far down the road. Okay. Always. You know, even looking to the end of the day, how can I get all this done today? How can I? And then I'm supposed to show up at this place and then I'm supposed to, whatever it is. But if I can just like bring it all down to the moment I'm in, Mm -hmm. there is always grace Mm. and enough in the moment you're in, always. I know that not just for my own life, but I've had, because of music, I've had the unique experience of total strangers will walk up to me and tell me their story. Yeah. I mean, like, I love that. But, you know, we sort of skip the small talk. It's not like, hey, my name is. Right. They'll say, your music has meant something to me. And when I was going through X, Y, Z, and we're in the deep end of the pool instantly. Wow. But because of that, I've heard so many people's, so many people's stories. You know, we all came together and we were so sad and we were just sitting in this room and put on this record and we're just looking at each other and, you know, whatever the circumstance is, gut-wrenching. I heard the most gut-wrenching stories and always in, even in the middle of the trauma, something good is also present. Mm. And so it gives me confidence. Even, you know, my story, yes. I mean, 
the hardest cry of my entire life. The details do not matter, but I mean, no kidding, outside under a night sky, face in the mud, snot cry, just, and then somehow in there floated in some kind of peace. Mm. And I was like, I am not alone in this. Mm. And just breathe. But that stress is like going, looking at the whole elephant that has to be eaten. Yeah. You know, or the whole mountain that has to be climbed. Yeah. And you just, you know, I think anybody that's ever done anything that requires endurance, you know, whether it's running or I enjoy just casual biking. Mm -hmm. But that was such a lesson to me when I got my first hybrid bike and I would be at some big hill and go, oh my gosh. And then I learned, hey, there's no shame in the simplest gear. That's right. Actually easier to ride than it is to walk. That's right. You know, you're not falling over. It just takes time. That's right. You're going to get through it. And I mean, it's it's funny, those lessons of endurance that we learn through physical things that also apply to emotional things. Yeah. You know, it's just like, okay, just one step, just breathe. Yeah, that's such a good example. I um, I like to run. My husband and I met in a running group, and when I'm going up a hill, I have a similar tactic where I do not look at the top of the hill because it seems mm-hmm. insurmountable. But I'm like, yep. that mailbox, that fire hydrant, yes. that light post, and then yes. one tiny thing at a time. Before you know it, I look up, and then what I naturally do when I get to the top is I, I'll glance over my shoulder like, okay, I did it. I made it, you know, before you keep going. And so that's such a great analogy for life, whether Mm -hmm. it's biking, but I love the bike. I love to bike as well, but I love the the easy gear. And I think sometimes we women can be, women especially, we can be so hard on ourselves. Like I've got to do the hard gear and I've got to get there at the top and I've got to be the fastest and I've got to look good when I get to the top. And it's like, hey, take the pressure off. Yes. Yeah, Uh, and and I also think when when you really have no extra gas in the tank. You just go, what are the essentials? Yes. I mean, I remember calling my oldest sister saying, I'm a failure of a mother. I'm not, I'm working so hard. I'm not having all these meaningful interactions with my kids. I'm delegating to somebody else. And I remember her saying, and my kids were young, yeah. barely five, not quite three, and a newborn. And I remember my sister, Kathy, saying, um, have you held each of your kids today? Did you say, I love you? Mm-hmm. Did they, do they have something in their stomach? Are they safe and dry? Do they have a pillow under their head? I'm like, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she goes, hey, you made it through today. That's right. You know, and so it's like, I mean, so many times it's, we just get all caught up in the, the details that really don't matter. Yeah. I can't find my other shoe. I'm wearing flip-flops. Who cares? Really? Right. You know? That's right. I didn't, you know, I don't have time to, present myself. Well, what matters most? Run a brush through your hair, throw on some lipstick. Really? I mean, it takes 30 seconds. I mean, all those things that you go, I thought this mattered. But really, when we show up into a room, in a room, the stuff we think is important about our presentation is so much less important. Mm -hmm. You know, what people remember about any of us is how they felt in our presence. And we get so locked in our own heads, like I'm, I'm not enough. I'm not this. I'm, I'm not. I'm not showing up the way I wanted to show up. But if we would just take a big breath at the threshold and say, "I'm a channel of love and light for this world," and all that requires is openness. That's right. And go. I'm going in here with my 14 day old unwashed hair, <laughs> and I powdered my body for the third day in a row. Nobody get downwind. But if you just go. Okay, I can be a channel of love and light. Yeah. And you just walk in and I love that. I love yeah, that. I, I love the wisdom in that. And I love the wisdom in what you said a minute ago. I want to circle back to you. when you, you the even the correlation you said, I'm typically overwhelmed when I look too far down the line. And as soon as you said that, I was like, Yes, that is what I do. It's like, oh, and then this and then this and then this. And we actually create this giant snowball effect that we feel like we're sinking under. But I love your reminder of like being present for right now, what's in front mm-hmm. of you, yep. you are doing it. It's not just that you can't do it. We feel like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. You are doing it. You're doing yeah. it right now. And I, I love that reminder. Similar to the overwhelm question I've got, and I know we have to wrap up. I want to respect your time. But I'm, I'm curious for someone like you, Amy, that has so many opportunities and demands, I always love asking people, how do you decide what you say yes to and what you say no to? Like, I know it's not a formula and all people are different of like, well, here's my, here's what I ask myself or here's the, here's the discernment I use. Do you have any type of like questions you ask yourself or, or anything to help you decide what's right for you and what's not? Mm-hmm. It's hard. 
Well, I'd like to say I have an overview. When it comes to work, I have a manager. Okay. And so, you know, she fields the first line. Sure. But there are times when I get, oh, I just, I put too much on my plate, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I have work things and then personal things. And I, I have sung with a great singer named Kim Keys. We've toured off and on for years and years. And she has seen me, you know, we're like putting on mascara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right before we go out and sing, warming up in the dressing room. And I remember at the end of one tour, and she said, will you do me a favor in this time off? And I said, what? And she said, I want to see you water the seeds that matter the most to you. Mm. That's beautiful. And that was the best advice, you know, and I don't, so I'm constantly having to say, am I watering the seeds that matter the most to me? Because those are like the relationships that I chose that are the people whose life crosses mine. And it feels like this is a real, this matters right now. Right. Um, but I usually know that I have, I've just, I'm too far outside the lines and I'm like, I'm dying here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's same. how I know that I have <laughs> overcommitted. And so yeah. to me, you know, it's just like the pendulum will swing too sure. wide. I'm too isolated. Well, now I'm kind of getting sad. Right. Well, now I'm <laughs> now doing too bored. much. <laughs> Yeah, so anytime, I always just look at that, uh, whatever that thing is that makes you do that. Yeah. And go, oh, well, it's just time to shift a little bit, yeah. you know? And I, I'm, I'm constantly saying to myself, I, I have my hands on my steering wheel. There you go. I can't steer anybody else. I can't steer my husband. I can't steer my children. But if I'm, if I, I can steer myself closer to this support system, I can steer myself away from this thing that feels a little toxic, you know. I mean, I don't ever do it right. I just know, you know, it's like you hit the yeah. thing on the edge of the road. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, recalibrate. Yeah. You know, that's the only way I know yeah. is just, you know, do your best and then you're constantly recalibrating. Yeah. I love that. So many women are listening right now going, oh yeah, I am on the I am on the bumper thing right now. But that's yeah, such a good yeah. that's such a good analogy. And I love, I love that advice. That is just such powerful advice. Water the seeds that matter most to you. And you, it just gives you such permission to decide what those are and 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 also the mm -hmm. freedom to shake the guilt. They don't they don't have to look like someone else's, not someone yes. on social media, not your neighbor, not your sister, what's important to them that you I love your example too of the the steering wheel. You have the responsibility and the opportunity to water the seeds that matter most to you. Amy, you're just a light. You are a are a vessel of light and love in this world. And I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for your music and for you hanging out with us today. I know people want to know uh, about the new anniversary album. So tell us what, what where can they get it and what all comes with it. I know you've done some new stuff with it to celebrate. We have. So Heart in Motion came out this month, 30 years ago, and we created— um, I mean, I'm sure all music platforms, you get it. And sure. they, we actually, you know, reprinted um, LPs. Oh, awesome. And yes, but I know that the digital downloads are possible with like songs that didn't make the record. Oh, cool. Um, and some of the original demos. Yeah. And some of the crazy remixes, you know, the whole <laughs> club singing back in the early 90s. Those have not been uh, findable anywhere. Yeah. And those used to crack me up. I would get a remix from AM Records and I would go, Are you sure that's my song? <laughs> what did you do <laughs> to it? And it starts going and you go, Oh, no wonder this is like hitting the club scene. <laughs> but um, yeah, and mostly we just did a lot of reminiscing with all the people that were part of that project. And it was just so lovely to look back and, and yeah, just reminisce about a, a sweet time in life. That's so. awesome. And I'm guessing they can get it anywhere. They get music, amygrant.com, all that, all yeah. that good stuff. Well, I cannot yeah. wait to go listen to Baby Baby. I'm like, I'm like, yes, it like brings me back. So thank you so much, Amy. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, thanks for hanging out with us today. And certainly thanks for your wisdom for all of us. Hey, just keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that you have sent in on social media. Let's see what we've got today. Here we go. Figuring out what to do. Quit work, start a business, stay at home mom, work with husband's business. So many options. <laughs> okay, what I love about this question is this person, and maybe you listening, have a lot of interests and a lot of options. 
Options, y'all, are a good thing. Options are fun. Options give you power. It gives you a sense of control. The only problem with a lot of options is that it can be paralyzing. Similar to the way this person worded this question, you can almost feel overwhelmed by your options because you're not sure which option to take, which path to pursue, which decision is the right one. So while I can't tell you what you should do of these options, I can give you a framework for deciding that for yourself. So if you're listening to this right now, and you feel overwhelmed by your options, whether that's options of a type of business or what work to pursue or just what to do with the next year of your life, I wanna give you a very simple framework that's gonna help you back out of that and hopefully decide what to do that's gonna help you. Okay, as simple as this sounds, I want you to visualize the future. Now, There is a benefit to visualizing the future like five to 10 years from now. But if you're like me, that can feel overwhelming. I've got some commitment issues. I don't really want to commit to something 10 years from now. I can think about my life in the next one to three years. So think about your life in the next one to three years. What does it look like? What do you want it to look like? What do you want to be doing? What does that vision look like for you? How are you spending your days? How are you spending your time? How are you using your gifts? How are you interacting with others? When you start to visualize your future, a more short-term future, not a long-term vision, but a a short-term vision of one to three years, then you start to see a picture of what this looks like. And when you back out of that, it will help you determine what decision to make today that's gonna lead you down that path. What decision is right today that moves you toward that vision? Another way to ask it is what must be true today to make that true in one to three years? So for the person writing this in or any of you in similar shoes, I want you to do this exercise. Rather than focus on all your options right in front of you that are so overwhelming, look up, look out, think about the future. Next year, two years from now, three years from now, What do you wanna be doing? How do you wanna spend your days and your time and your gifts? And when you get that picture, and you may need to spend some time on it, that's okay. You may need to pray about it, that's okay. Talk to your spouse or friends about it, that's great. But once you get it, then hopefully you should be able to back out of that and see clearly which of these options leads you in that direction. It's a great question. You're in a great position to have options, and I hope this helps you pick the right one. All right, let's do one more question. What company do you recommend for creating your brand logo? It's a great question. Similar to the options question, you have a lot of options. I will tell you, I always recommend, when possible, working with a small business owner. So working with a graphic designer, for example. Here's why. When you work with a person that they're running their business, they're a solopreneur, they are a one-man show, one-woman show, you're able to have so much more personal interaction than if you were to use a big company where you're assigned someone that you never even have any interaction with. So because this is your brand, it's your business, it's your baby, you probably want this logo to reflect you and your values and your style and your personality. You want it to look a certain way. And so it would be really great to work with an individual that will help you bring that vision to life. I'll tell you within my coaching group, the Business Boutique Academy, there are tons of women that will share services. So we've got graphic designers that are academy members that are doing work for other academy members, whether they're accountants or or fitness professionals or someone running a hair salon. So if you can find someone in a community you're a part of, whether that's the academy or something else, that's a great way to do it. Another way is just ask around. Post on Facebook, talk to friends, talk to family. There is another business boutique Facebook group that's an open group for anyone. You can certainly seek out those services in that group as well. But if you find a person, then most likely you will have a much more personal touch on your brand logo. I hope that helps. All right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me as always. And for more encouragement on becoming the person you want to be, you can visit ChrissyWright.com. Mercy Me is coming to Pittsburgh, the Together Again tour with Mercy Me, Crowder, and special guest, Andrew Ripp, Thursday, October 5th. Bring your family and friends to the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh for Mercy Me, Crowder, and Andrew Ripp live in concert. 
three multiple award-winning artists on one stage for one night. Let your spirit soar, your heart sing, and your faith ignite. Mark your calendars for Thursday, October 5th. Get your tickets now at mercyme.org.